my name is Miriam Fontanes. I am also a product manager in Red Hat and with the application service uh, BU. And today I'm here to talk about AI powered applications with OpenShift. So I guess this is it. So what we'll discuss today is basically how do you build an AI powered application? And the answer is with OpenShift <laughs> because uh, the unique differentiator that uh, OpenShift has, or where we are finding our sweet spot, is that you can manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of an AI-powered application. You don't have to divide uh, the people with different tools and different platforms. You can just give them one comprehensive set of tools to connect all of your data and your business events in real time, or if you're still doing it uh, or in batch, uh, you have tooling to train your model, to build applications in any language that you choose, and to deploy that in a uh, consistent and cohesive platform, which is OpenShift. Uh, you can start making your predictions and then get feedback to compare how are you doing versus you know, the traditional uh, method. But most importantly is that OpenShift has already a set of practices and tools that allow you to apply that same uh, short feedback loop of, um, with not only the, the application developers, but also with the AI engineers, so everyone can interact happily with the same platform. So first of all, what is an intelligent application? Well, it's an application where part of the code is written by a human and the other part is created by a, by a model trained with data. Uh, some of the most common uh, use cases for intelligent applications, recommendation engines, virtual assistants, um, uh, fraud detection, money laundering, uh, things that require you to make a decision that you could do best uh, learning from the data that you already have. And why is it so difficult to build this type of applications, right? So first of all, you have at least two different types of personas that in this case are very different. You have a data scientist working on the model that gathers, prepares the data, develops the model. They use certain tools that are completely different than the tools that your regular developer uses. And both of them have to iterate uh, independently uh, on their side of, of the application. That is a whole. Maybe you have three different profiles with three different tooling and uh, three different processes to build this application. So you have the data, and the data engineer goes through the process to acquire the data, clean it, uh, check the lineage, calibrate it. They have the model, you have the app, or you can have even more profiles. So by interviewing people who do data science day in and day out, the more um, the most common uh, phrase that they said were like, uh, yes, when I finish training the model, I just give it away and off it goes. Uh, I don't know how effective is it being in, in real life data or in production because I don't know what they do with it. So we have three different people, well, at least two. Uh, the other thing is that each one have their own practices and tools, so they all do one does MLOps, other one does uh, DevOps. They have to put their code in a source code repository version or in a model uh, registry. They have to manage the configuration. They have to manage the data. But at the end, they kind of are applying those same engineering practices to, to do their job. Uh, the application, well, it's also a little bit more complicated with a regular application. Well, you just have to manage the code and the configuration. With an intelligent application, well, you have the code of the model itself, you have the model that you have to version, you have the data, you have the application configuration, the application code. So when something changes, or when something is, gets broken, how do you know which of all of these variables are the ones that broke the code? Uh, if it was a change in the model, if it's the data that it's drifting, uh, is it a change in the code of the app? So it's a little, it gets, uh, more multi-dimensional. Um, so everybody's, well, that's not how it's supposed to look, but the idea is that everybody's trying to use AI 
But the problem is that taking AI out of the lab and putting it into the real world is it's one of the main challenges. And to prove it, well, we have a landscape full of products that you can use, and these landscapes are getting a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> there are lots of videos with people overwhelmed. You now need a landscape for the landscapes, because there are so many now. Um, so if you're going to try to do this yourself and set up uh, your own platform, how do you go about it? Which one do you choose? So I like to think of OpenShift as the Mr. Potato Head of the platforms. Because you have multiple pieces that you can put in, that they all, they all fit well together, they all work well together, and depending on which ones you use, well, you have a different Mr. Potato. You can have an intelligent Mr. Potato or a Mrs. Potato. Um, so for intelligent applications, well, these are the pieces. This is our Mr. Potato. Um, so we have support for taking advantage of your GPUs, of your public clouds. You have different tools for model serving. Uh, you have uh, tools to integrate your models, uh, each one for the different type of personas that we saw. But the most important part is that they all work on the same platform and they all apply the same practices. So this is like uh, a short story, how would you do it? So let's say that you have the data scientist, it's developing or training the model using Jupyter. You have the app developer who's using whatever language it is, let's say Java and IDE. They both commit their code into a Git repository. Once the code is there, uh, you can use S2I in OpenShift to gather that code and produce the model. If it's a model, then you put it inside of a registry for model. If it's the code, well, maybe you generate an artifact and you put it in an artifact repository. Uh, you use, you also have tools for to do streaming like Kafka or to change uh, data captures to bring the data and start uh, the inferencing of the model. And the user, well, he, so he sees uh, front end in a web UI. And if something goes wrong, well, we go back to the code, everything uh, it's regenerated and everything it's automated using the practices that you already have in place. Because most of the applications are not new applications. You have to put that into what you already have, which usually it's not the prettiest. So what are some of the benefits of using a platform like OpenShift, the Mr. Potato of uh, platforms? You can deliver code for intelligent applications in a reproducible and reliable way. And you apply the best software practices in an opinionated way to streamline your whole um, life cycle. So I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm around.